Okay, I talked about pool swimming. Um, in the top five performances of two for 2021 for pool swimming. Uh, in pool swimming, I, I didn't verbally clarify in the video. Uh, is swimming laps for competition in a pool. It's different than artistic swimming, which is also known as synchronized swimming, and it's different than open water swimming. And so, and why did I make that distinction? Um, because I, oh, right, pool swimming competition, people swim in laps in a pool, um, competitively. Uh, and so <laughs> I'm going to do this for the rest. So I didn't, um, the motivation behind that video, so it was the last video, was I wrote and published about swimmers and swimming in 2021. And I also, other sports I wrote about included diving, high diving, water polo, open water swimming, um, probably some other things that I forgot. Um, <laughs> but those are the first that come to mind, at least with like writing and publishing. And yeah. And so I did watch the Olympic Games and other sporting events. So I did write, I published, and I watched stuff. And so I've talked about pool swimming. And so now I'm going to do my top five performances uh, for non-swimming. Uh, or, yeah, top five performances in non-pool swimming for 2021. And it might seem a bit disproportionate, but I wrote about a ton, not a ton of swimmers. Not a ton of swimmers. I wrote about a lot of swimmers um, compared to the number of non-swimmers I wrote about. So it's just kind of reflective of my year of writing. So like, let's say I continued this habit of writing about sporting competitions as they're going on. And let's say I focused on track and field athletes, then I might end up with like a year end ranking that ranks the top five track and field performances of the year. Um, it's just stuff that I've been watching, writing, publishing about. So stuff that I'm I am like, oh, this was, this, this meant something and I might put this in a ranking. Um, so kind of being selective. So some of these people's names, well, one in particular, I had to write down for spelling. Um, so we're going to start with number five. Uh, I got to write about, oh, I'm going with red instead of black this time. Yeah. For ink. Um, yeah. Going bold. Is that going bold? I think that's the the, we learn about yeah colors and wearing colors and presentations and was, they were like red means power and I was like I definitely don't agree with that but hey that's what they chose to share and that's like professionals who work on the subtleties of color and stuff like that this doesn't mean power it just stands out well with the white background um best contrast I have found um dark green actually but oh yeah the other reason it's kind of like this is December 3rd, 23rd, I'm filming this, and this sweatshirt is kind of green, and this, and this is red, so it's kind of Christmas colors. Yeah, that's the real reason. I just started throwing other stuff out there, too. Okay, and I'm going to really sidetrack. So number five is Carolyn Marks. Uh, shortboard... Surfing, score of 15.33 points. And I'll put this in perspective as to how good a score this is. Um, uh, in round three, uh, at the 2020... Summer Olympic Games. Uh, so she, this was the highest score. So like, this was the first Olympic Games that surfing was held as a sport at the Olympic Games. And I don't know if they have Olympic records and they don't reveal them later or if it takes a few Olympic Games to come up with Olympic records. But I could see potentially like in watching and writing and publishing about surfing at the Olympic Games. This was the highest score achieved by any female competitor in 
from all of the rounds of competition at the these 2020 Summer Olympic Games and not only was it the highest score, no other female competitor scored higher than 15. Uh, and the next highest score was like a 14.9 something. So she dominated all of the rest of the female surfers. And the person who won the gold medal, so the person, yeah, who won the gold medal, scored a 14.93. So this person did four tenths of a point higher than the gold medalist earlier in the competition. That kind of stuff matters for me. And like, in like, I'm a runner first and a swimmer second and stuff like that. And so like, peak performances tend to correlate with records. They don't didn't call this an Olympic record and they might not even have Olympic records in the sports yet. Um, but like, this is a really high score. And so it's, uh, it's a sign of quality of surfing, right? They're ranked on a quality scale. So she was the highest quality score from all the female competitors, including compared to the gold medal winning score. And not only that, the male who won the short board competitions, it was just short board competitions for this first Olympic Games that was hosting swim or surfing, not swim, surfing. Um, the male scored a 15.14. So if she had competed like with the men, she would have won the gold medal in the men too, like in the final round of competition, that kind of thing. So like she dominated the gold medal performances from both men and women. So that's I, that's pretty good in my books. Like, I, I find that impressive. And she's one for, like, positive body image and stuff like that. So, that's pretty cool. Um, something that, I think, especially teenage girls, like, it's a, it's a, it's a great, um, thing to care about all women, not just one subdivision of women. So I respect her for that. The next one, number four, is uh, I wrote about the event this happened at. So this is Aiden Heslop. And his it's the highest difficulty dive, which I'm guessing they mean high dive, but it might actually be dive period ever performed but in history which is like, that's all of the sources I found called it that. And so like, I'm new to writing about diving. So that kind of history making and getting to write about these kind of things and like write on the event page, that's like, this is happening. That's like, there's an, as a writer, that's it's a really big freaking honor. And especially when I don't know that's going to happen. Like, so it was very cool. Like, I got to write on this, Somebody beat me to putting the results up. So he won a gold medal. Um, but, and, and that's, that, that's good. Um, because I was writing a lot of things. So it was good to have other people get, get the good stuff sometimes. Yeah. Just, I, that's how I feel anyway. So 6.2 difficulty. 27 meter. So none of this puny three or 10 meter springboard or platform stuff that goes on. Um, 27 meters. Like, there's the like, that's a big number, okay? And like, that's a historic number, highest ever to date. And, and I don't know if that's high diving or diving, but highest ever performed. And it's from 27 meters. She's really freaking tall. And like, I'm, I was the kind of person that like a one meter springboard was my max. So like, this is just mind boggling to me. And he's from Wales. So he's of Wales. Carolyn Marks is of Florida. Or I think, is this right? Florida. She's of the United States of America. Sorry. Um, and then this was at the Abu Dhabi. Aquatics Festival. So this is like the overarching sporting event, but then within that, it was at the 2021 uh, Athena High Dive Thing Qualifier. So 
um so it, my mind my tiny little mind is still my puny little mind is still trying to wrap itself around this and this is just mind-boggling it how, how do i understand this this is something i would never do <laughs> okay like there's respect levels um and that's just like so not me and that kind of thing i know i've gone bungee jumping from the tallest bungee bridge in the world so like some people might be like hey you have a history of jumping from high heights but that does not mean i would do it again so just you know mass respect there it's like hashtag respect for aiden heslop oh next one this is this is my okay i'd say this is this is my favorite like this is so this sport from the olympic games but it's not like my that my number one is like my number one for everything and this is like so i guess this is like my number three for all sports including pole swimming like I, I can't make those comparisons. I, I'm getting sidetracked. This was just so great. Okay, like this is, I played water polo. And so this is a, the sport on this one. So the sport on the first one was surfing. The sport on the last one, number four, was high diving. This sport is water polo. This is Maggie Steffens. Eh. Of the USA. And uh, in the, so there's like preliminary rounds in the water polo tournament at the 2020 Summer Olympic Games. So this is, okay, spoiler, like broken nose in play. This is so hard to get in water polo um, during prelims, prelim rounds of tournament. Uh, of water polo tournament at the 2020 summer games. Okay, um, like I played water polo. People kick, scratch, try to br drown each other, bite each other, punch each other, get bloody noses. This is the worst that we saw in terms of nose damage when I was playing was somebody gave another person, like they punched them and they got like a bloody nose. Some person from Team China broke her nose and she had to get out and had it like aligned and stuff and she continued to play and just like, this is... So this is number three, and this ranks up there for me because it's having played water, water polo and know how violent it gets, especially when it's like super competitive teams. Like this is so water polo. That's like this is in, like her resilience and being like this isn't gonna stop me. I don't care if my nose is in the line. I don't care if there's blood. I'm still going on. That is water polo. She is water polo. Maggie Steffens is water polo. So, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Point being, that's just, uh, pardon my English badassery. At it, like, at, at, at its peak right there. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Number two. 